All right. So let's talk about calculating heat. And I should say calculating heat energy. Calculating heat energy. And there must be some way to calculate it, otherwise there couldn't be a lot of analysis here. What we say is that the change in heat energy, delta EH, is equal to the mass of a substance times, and now this is a new thing for us. Although you may have talked about it in elementary school, you probably didn't talk about it uh, mathematically. Times what we're going to call the heat capacity, and I'm going to label this up in a minute, okay, don't worry. Times the, no, it's not the speed of light. Different C, it's a different C. Times the change in temperature. Equals mc squared. No, it's not equals mc squared. It's equals mc delta t. Of course, the chemistry people usually say q equals mc delta t, but that's okay. We'll forgive them. Why does it stand for heat energy? I have no idea. That's I, I believe that's why our textbook used it, uses delta eh. So yeah, it's descriptive. So here's the mass of our substance. Okay, the mass of our substance, C is heat capacity. People even say, not just heat capacity, but specific heat capacity. And of course, delta T is just the temperature change, change in temperature, T2 minus T1, if you like. And we already said this previously, but delta EH would be the heat energy either lost or gained. Okay, and if it's a positive value, then it's heat energy gained. And if it's a negative value, then it's heat energy that's lost. And a way that you're going to introduce the positive and negative sign, because you can't have positive or negative mass, and actually the heat capacity, I'll show you in a minute, is always positive, the positive or negative sign is going to come into effect through the, ten the temperature change. And so delta T is actually T2 minus T1. That's what the delta really means, change in temperature. If you start out with, let's say, zero degrees, sorry, if you have a final temperature of zero degrees, and you have an initial temperature of 100 degrees, did you cool down or heat up? Cool down. Cool down. What's zero minus 100? Negative 100. If these guys were switched, 100 minus zero, you get a positive value, positive 100. Okay, so that's where the negative sign is going to pop in in the math. So let me give you a few values. Specific heat capacities. And these are ones we could look up in the textbook, but I want to throw them out there as values that you could use. Some specific heat capacities of common substances. So maybe one of the most common substances on our planet, water. We write C. And rather than writing the whole word water, I usually just write C subscript W, W for water. 4.18 times 10 to the power of 3. And now, that's a 3. Now we got to deal with the fact that there's going to be units involved. So I know, let's go back up to the units up here in our original equation. I know that the units for energy is going to be joules. So I'm going to write that above the energy. What's the units for mass? Kilograms. Kilograms. And you know what, just for our purposes, let's do the temperature in degrees Celsius. What would the units for C have to be to make all these units end up being joules? Well, I don't know, let's see. What if I made one of the units be joules? What would I have to cancel out to make the end unit be joules? Celsius. You have to have kilograms in Celsius in there for sure. Should they be on the top or on the bottom of this unit? Should be on the bottom if they're going to cancel out, right? Because these guys are on the top. 
So we write it as joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Nobody said it was a beautiful unit. Okay. So the units for specific heat capacity are joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And now something that I said previously in the lesson was that one Kelvin was equal in magnitude to one degree Celsius. So if the units for joules per kilogram degree Celsius could work if I'm doing temperature changes in degrees Celsius, if I'm doing temperature changes where all the temperatures have been written down in Kelvin, I could also write these units as joules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay? And what this thing means, what this expression actually means is, and I'm going to write some other uh, useful heat capacities in just a second, but what this really means is the amount of energy in joules that it takes to change the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. I'll just write it out now, okay? Yeah, it's a, it's a big number actually. It's uh, 4,180. This is joules. That's that's how you write out joules as a whole word. It's a guy's last name. Oh, sorry. Did I misunderstand the question? Yeah. Oh, 4,180 or 4.18 times 10 to the power of three. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you right here in the green what it is. It's it's the amount of energy in joules that it takes to change one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Yeah, 4,180 joules to raise one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. So if you could perfectly convert your, your kinetic energy that you make on a bicycle. Yeah, by punching water. Okay, let's forget about the bicycle. By punching water, if you could turn your mechanical energy into thermal energy perfectly, 100% efficiently, which by the way, you can. But if you could, you could, you could boil a glass of water by punching it. I mean, good luck. Good luck. But you know what? Hammering something to make it hot isn't totally unheard of. You ever taken a metal and you hit a, a nail? I mean, sorry, a hammer and you hit a nail? Take a hammer, hit a nail. Hit it like 20 times and then touch it. You're heating it up by giving your kinetic energy to that, that metal. And, and somehow, the particles are vibrating more. And if you wanted to, you could figure out how much of your energy went into that thing by calculating the mass of the, or measuring the mass of the nail looking up the heat capacity of iron, if it's an iron nail, and measuring the temperature change for that nail, you could figure out how much of your mechanical energy actually was absorbed by the nail. Yeah? Well, maybe friction was the method. That's the way that the kinetic energy was transferred. But in the end, you're going to get thermal energy. OK, so that's water. Let's give you a couple more useful ones. Glass. going to be 8.40 times 10 to the power of 2 and iron four point five zero times 10 to the power of 2 and again joules per kilogram degree Celsius joules per kilogram degrees Celsius.